Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, it's me, it's Alex, it's the Ramble. Hi, everybody. We're going to be here until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, as we always like to say, out to Lake Oswego, or Oswego, or Os- whatever. You had it right the first time. Just go with the first one. Out to rioting Portland, yeah. Oregon, we go with... Uh, it's not, and that's not fair. I know, I you know. You sound like President Trump. I know, that's why I'm making a joke about it. Didn't sound like it. It was meant to be a joke. Because I hear... No, I, don't it, think we, I don't think that... It's appropriate to joke about that. Anymore. If you would listen to Trump, your town is in flames right now. It is in sheer anarchy. You know the 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 That's barbarian. Why we shouldn't, we shouldn't yeah. perpetuate that. Uh, well, of course not. Of course not. How you doing, kiddo? I'm okay. Kind of tired today. Kind of tired today. Some days are good days. Some days are bad days. Right. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Well, you know. Uh, in general, that's life. In your particular situation, it's just something you deal with. You have to deal with, I guess. Well, you know. what's happening when we finish? Uh, sorry about that. I will close that down. Did you hear that noise? I don't. It, no, but turn it down anyway. Uh, let's see. Does this affect my audio at all? No, not at all. Not at all. You sound fine. It, it affects me hearing you. Really oh, okay. Does. All right. Okay. Well, I'll I'll try and be um, a little we'll louder. I'll just have to leave it for now. Okay. Anyway. Uh, after we're done, sometime shortly after that, a person's coming to look over my apartment. I have finally going to hire a, a house cleaner. Oh, really? I can't do it anymore. I, I, you know, um, <coughs> it's, I'm sur- it's not... Like having it, you know, like people just have house cleaners. I never have. I never saw the point. Yeah. Can't yeah. do it anymore. Well, you, uh, you know, you're like me. I, I've never believed in house cleaners, but Marjorie believes in house cleaners. And so we have somebody who comes once every two weeks. And this is a pretty big house. So, you know, but we, while the corona... I mean, if, you know, if you have the money, it, it's that's fine. But I just never... I always thought it was too expensive for what it had. What it is, and they always put things away where you can't find them. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you for agreeing with me on that one. (laughs) No, I never liked somebody coming and cleaning up my mess. It just somehow there was something, I don't know, it it didn't sit right with me. But Well, you know, you maybe have a bigger place. Uh, Although my place is two bedrooms. Up until a couple of months ago, I could do it all myself. But, you know, there's funny things happen when you have diseases yeah and the thing about copd is that it never gets better by the way it can only get worse and what happens i think i must have mentioned this before if i bend over to pick up something i've dropped or whatever um i have it takes two minutes for me to get my breath when i stand back up yeah and there's a lot of bending over when you're cleaning house. Well, I mean, what happened was when, when the coronavirus hit, our cleaning woman couldn't come over, all right? So for about four months, we were doing the cleaning ourselves. And we were not very good at it, you know? We were not very good at it. This is a big place. This, takes a, this has a lot of floor surface, 250 square feet, you know? So it's not easy. But anyway, what uh, what think you of what's going on politically? Um, Was there a question there? Yeah, there's kind of a question there. What's the question? The question is, what do you think about what's going on politically? Oh, you know, I am so, I'm just tired to death of it. I know, me too. I've given up on details. I go only with headlines. Yeah. Um, It's uh, a president of the United States is defending somebody who killed two people and maimed another with his gun. Mm -hmm. A president of the United States is doing that and making up a story of what caused that person to shoot. 
making it up. Yeah. Venting it out of nothing, the, the, the way he wants the story to be. <clears throat> I mean, it seems, given everything else, that it's hardly worth mentioning. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, there's just something every single... You know, being on the West Coast, when I get up in the morning, life is pretty well in gear on the East Coast. Things are starting to happen on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And I make the coffee and I turn on the computer and I sit down to go through the email and news. And Alex, every single day, if it's not every single day, it's not worth mentioning that it isn't because it's so frequent that the first thing I find out in the morning is that President Trump has done something that will harm some person people, group of people, yeah. every single day, mm. every day. Yeah. <clears throat> and how long, and, and it, hey, it happens to go on during the day. More things come up that he does. Mm -hmm. I'm worn, he's worn me out. Yep. Just worn me out. If I'm still here, I'll vote against him. I don't care if they're running a radish. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I can't stand it. I, I, you know, I know exactly how you feel. Uh, I've gotten to the point now. I do this show every night, okay, um, and uh, four nights a week, and I'm getting to the point where I don't know if I want to do it right now. The, is it always politics? Well, most of the time it is. Uh, I do a show on <coughs> Mondays in the afternoons. It's a nicer show, and we talk about a lot of other stuff. But uh, that one seems to hit politics, and I'm so tired of talking about this man. This has been four years of him dominating the news cycle every single day. You know, I, 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 I don't know if America is not going to vote for him because they hate him or because they're just sheerly bored with him, you know? It's exhausting. Um. And, and, and I don't think, the longer it goes on, the less I I think of Congress also. Yeah. That almost any single thing he's done as president should be, if not to remove him, um, a way to control him from following on with it. Yeah. Never do anything. As a couple of them get up and they make noises on camera. Yeah. And and they go back and do whatever they do in their offices. <clears throat> and so it's apparent that, first of all, I guess, I, the big takeaway is that our system doesn't work. Well. If you have a leader who will do anything, including encouraging shooting people in the street, well, then the. Um, that's okay. That's what our system allows. Well, let me ask you this, though, because I asked myself this question. In my lifetime, and that has been a long <laughs> lifetime, all right, a little bit longer than yours, all right, <laughs> have I ever had anybody run for president that I was absolutely overly enthusiastic about? And my answer was no. I don't think that's the question. Huh? I don't think that's a reasonable question. Well, I think it's a reasonable question. Have I ever, the question is, have I ever voted for somebody that I was enthusiastic about? And the answer is no. I don't think that that's a comparison. Really? I Why? reject that. Why do you reject it? Because it doesn't make any sense. It's not sensible. Well, no, but I'm thinking about... Somebody you know, who is apparently a crook, a con man, um... I think responsible for a whole lot of virus deaths compared to people whose policies, real policies that the current president doesn't have, mm -hmm. some policies that you don't agree with. That's a very big difference. People who know how oh, to no, run no, a government, no, but I'm not trying to compare to do it this way, and you may or may not agree agree with somebody who thinks no. we it's okay for citizens to shoot each other in the street. Well, no, I agree with you on that, but what I was saying is you brought up <laughs> the fact that these people in Washington are dysfunctional and they blah, 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 and so on, and that I thought, if I look back in the past, was there anybody that truly grabbed me in a way that I went, I'm happy to sit down and vote for this guy, rather well, than that do, I would... Do you feel that way about anybody you know on Earth? Um, yeah, you. 
<laughs> get you out really of that. Don't want me as get, get out of that but, piece of flattery. Um, I mean, it's not the same thing. You're you're comparing people who understand often have experience of many mm. years in the House or the Senate or as governors who understand. First of all, number one, the government is not a business. Trump doesn't know that. And that makes a big difference of how you run it. Did you see that this, I mean, there's hardly any point in recounting these things, but one of them is he refused this week to join the coalition of like a hundred and I don't know how many governments in the world to work out how when a vaccine mm -hmm. is developed, it will be distributed fairly. And he said, no, we're not going to be part well, of because that. He, because who is running it? I'm sorry, it's the, what? The World Health Organization is running it, and that's his way and of saying it. That's what he yeah, said, yes. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, so what it happens, doesn't matter what his reason is. That it's yeah. a completely dangerous, unreasonable thing to do. Well, in case people don't get the true <laughs> uh, uh, value of what we're talking about here, uh, uh, this guy is saying to the rest of the world, you come up with a virus, we don't want it. A virus vaccine, no, no, we vaccine. don't want it. We don't vaccine. want a virus vaccine, we don't want it. You know, because we're not going to take it from the World Health Organization. Hell, no, I what he's saying is not the, out, the the party's not saying out loud is that if the United States develops a virus, none of you can have any. Is that what he's saying or is it the other? I, that's the that's the part he's not saying. All out I'm loud. saying is that by not batching with the rest of the world, he's not <clears throat> he's locking himself out of something positive here. Now, the thing is, and this is something I've, I heard today, that um, they have like five viruses, virus vaccines out there ready to be approved, right? And they Not say- Not approved in testing. It, 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 well, it's in testing, but they're waiting, uh, they're waiting to have it approved after the they testing. They can't approve it until the okay. testing. The point I'm making is they say at least four of those aren't gonna get approved, that they're not, they're not gonna be ready for prime time. So I mean, well, but you're kind of talking about it in a not in the. It's not that's not the way it works. Yeah. Yes, or no. It is developed. It it kills people or it doesn't. It kills the virus or it doesn't. It causes other problems or it doesn't. But you have to go through, and this you know Trump doesn't want to do it. Three sets of trials to find all that out. I mean, does it work on all people? Does it yeah. work on all ages, and so on and so forth. Lots and lots of testing to be done. Yeah, and it's something you can't rush, but in a way, we're in a situation where <laughs> we feel we have to rush. I really? Mean, I don't agree that we should rush, but... Uh, but that's what you just said. No, what I'm saying is we are in a situation in which people feel we have to rush because of the economy, because people are tired of being indoors and wearing masks and all of that. All the wrong. I have reasons. no interest in that. You have to stay home. You have to wear a mask. That's right. I want to I know. Mean, it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. None of us like it. I want to know what's so terrible and and horrible about <coughs> wearing a mask. Yeah, I know there. Well, in my case, yeah. it's very very. I do it, but it's awful. I can't breathe. Well, I listen. I Stop I don't and have. Stop. Put my head down and yeah. hide and oh, pull yeah. it down to get my breath every few steps. A, a COPD. I don't have, but even I, when I go out wearing a mask, it's a little more difficult to breathe than it would normally be. Yes, I know it's not comfortable. I know it, you know, but it's saving lives and it's your respect for other human beings. This is the part that gets to me. Don't you understand that, you know, you're part of the human race and you should have respect for another human being. And that's what you're doing when you wear a mask. You're saying, I'm protecting you. And they're saying, I'm protecting you. But we, I don't know if we live in a country that uh, isn't just that selfish that we can't understand that as a simple uh, idea, you know? There was a story in the paper this morning, and I don't remember which one, explaining the messaging of masks and distancing and how certain countries, and again, I've forgotten which ones, and <clears throat> which newspaper, but ones that from day one, back in January or February, when this began, put out consistent messages to the people of mm -hmm. their country. 
of wear a mask and this kind of mask and do it in these circumstances. Keep your distance, whatever it was they said, and so on. And those countries, they named three or four they were discussing, um, have very, very low incidence of the virus compared, and certainly compared to us. Right. And, um, and the thing is that through the six or seven months we've been going through this so far, the message has always been consistent from the top. We've never had a message, let alone consistent. Well, here's what gets me. Do you know, to, the, to, the, to this day, today, uh, there were a thousand deaths yesterday in the United mm -hmm. States. In New York, by the way, we only had three. Okay? Uh, now, I'm not bragging here. I'm just saying. Yes, you are. Just well, sit well, no, down. but nobody, nobody <laughs> says, let's look at the New York model and see what they're doing right. You know? I mean, our infection rate is down quite low. Uh, our hospitalizations are at an all-time low. Uh, people on in, in, intubators are at an all-time low. What are we doing right? Why don't you look at this model and say, let's start thinking about using that model. But Trump so hates Cuomo, so hates the very state he, he's from, that he isn't about ready to say, let's look at the New York model. You know, because what we did was very methodical, very scientific. We stuck to the science. We threw politics out the door. We threw the economy out the door. The most important thing was saving lives. So, I made my speech. <laughs> Yay for us! You know, don't come here. Don't come here. We don't want your 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 cooties. You know. Uh, so don't come here, but it, it's really, uh, we are right now the safest place in the country to be. So I made my case. Yay, New York. Well, you know, you love New York anyway, so how can you not go yay, New York? It, it, I don't know, it just doesn't compute for me to approach it that way, of state against state. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, it, it, you know, it's just that... I just see this this carnage happening everywhere and, and kids going back to college and, and, and holding parties and not wearing masks and not, it's just, yeah, I know kids, you're not probably not gonna die from this if you get it, but your mother is. People, people that age get it and some of them die. Yeah, some of them die, but not enough. <laughs> well, I mean, is it okay for six to die? But not ten. I mean, come on. Yeah, but you know, I it, have a period. Remember when you were a kid? You thought you were you were in, invincible. But that isn't you know? the point. This is not, you know, a, a winter cold. No, I agree with you, and I'm saying that, that they should know that they're not. <laughs> if if at the very least they're doing it for their parents and their grandparents when they go home to see them, you know. Well, you know, teenagers, which it's mostly about. It's their job to disobey authority, you know? yeah. yeah. You remember being that age. And yeah. so the point is, if we'd had consistent messaging from day one, as yeah. this kind of, that were discussed in the, in the newspaper piece I read this morning, mm -hmm. I think we would have a lot more people doing what they should be doing. But, you know, I'm still not clear what is the best mask. Nobody is. No. I, to this day, I just, I have decided that probably, you know, this is the best. You know, the, just the surgical mask is the best to use. The N95s are a bit difficult, um, uh, and they don't give you, afford you that much more protection than these. If you're wearing this and someone else is wearing this, you're protecting each other. That's it. So, you know. as far as anybody can be protected. It's not foolproof. No. People get it all the time that wore a mask. Right, right. I'll tell you what. But it helps. Well, it means fewer infections. I like that the infection rate has been under one in New York State for th three weeks, I think it is. And because of that, it's a little safer for me to go outside. You know, I don't feel as fearful of going outside. But I also, in this neighborhood, and I don't, I, I've mentioned this any number of times, I don't get it. Uh, I live in Harlem, large black community. Not very many people wearing masks. You know, I go down, I go down, t I go to Midtown, and everybody's wearing a mask. Well, I'll tell you, I live in a an apartment community that happens to be 
mostly old people. There may be mm -hmm. six families here with young children, and the rest are mostly old people. I go out to take out the trash to go to the mailbox or, for God's sake, get in the car once in a while and go to the grocery store. And I would I'd say I don't see more than one in ten wearing a mask. So you can't say any one type of person doesn't wear a mask. Right. Well, I, I, all I'm saying is that here it, it seems rather uh, predominant. And I wanted to make up a T-shirt that read, if Black Lives Matter, wear a mask. You know? Because, I mean, if, if it, it this goes... This is what we need, one more sign. One more sign, yeah, one more piece of... Uh, Signs. Uh, so, uh, do you notice anything in your wandering? Do you do social media at all on any level? I mean, are you? No. No. Okay. Never. Because uh, you know, I was wondering if anybody is starting to see the Russians hacking us. You know. See the what? The Russians hacking us, trying to, you know, play with the election. They say they're doing it again this year, but I don't. You know, there's I, only so many stories I can follow in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And I the, just don't care. And the most important one is they're going to do something. They did it last time. They're doing it this time. So what's new? Yeah, exactly. Tell me something new. So uh, anyway, what are your what are your readers of your blog, which is timegoesby.net? You like the way I just worked sandwich that right in? What are they talking about? What is their what are their? We've been talking about? about end of life things. Yeah, because that's your. And, and a um, today I posted a story that a woman in Canada managed to get a petition through whatever they call their parliament or whatever in Canada. I'm ashamed, I don't know what that's called. But it's a um, an exception to the psilocybin ban that's been in force in right. Canada since 1974. It's only for four people to use it right now. That the, they're, you know, just it, the, the Petition was just for those four people, and that was what was granted. But in writing the story, I looked around, and Oregon and and Washington D.C. both have items on the ballot in November mm -hmm. to either decriminalize or, to some degree, legalize psilocybin magic magic mushrooms. Yeah, and already they're decriminalized or made legal in Oakland, Santa Cruz. And Denver. So there's this little mini bubble. Well, let's explain. <laughs> explain for a second what psilocybin does to people who don't know. It's one of the uh, one of the mind drugs. It's one of the uh, uh, what, what did we call them back? You know, hallucinogens. But, More psych uh, yeah. psychedelic. Psychotropic. But this one has got a lot of scientific research behind it. Psilocybin, which occurs in a bunch of different kinds of mushrooms. And it is, it is very useful um, for people with end-of-life anxiety. And what pe most people will say that have done it, I've done it, <clears throat> um, is that it removes a whole lot of the fear that it, you come away feeling that you really are part of this great overwhelming thing, whatever you choose to right. call it. Right. Right. Depend on your religious leanings or not. I don't have any, so for me, I think of it as the universe, you know? <laughs> um, and so there's this little mini trajectory starting, going upward. Yeah, right. Making this, I mean, they, the, the laws that have been written, as opposed to decriminalization, assign it for end-of-life anxieties, that sort of thing. And it really should be just let people use it. Exactly. You know, you take what you can get in little mini steps. Right. So that was encouraging. Well, we're almost kind of running out of time here. Uh, and for this session, I never like to say we're running out of time because, quite frankly, we're, we're all running out of time, but we're not running out of You know what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, I'm very confused. I'm running out of time. Huh? Yeah, you're running, running out of you're time. You're running out of time, but the sand hasn't gone to the bottom of the hourglass yet. <laughs> but there's not much left in the top. <laughs> <laughs> but what we'll do is we'll come back again uh, maybe in, t in two weeks and uh, check in with you again and see how you're doing and see what you're thinking. 
This is, okay, this you too. is my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett. She can be found at timegoesby.net. It's what it's like to get older and, in some cases, what it's like to die. Uh, and um, uh, Well, I haven't quite got there yet. She hasn't gotten there yet. <laughs> she's, still, she's still with us, folks. She's still above room temperature. Anyway, we love you, Ronnie, and we'll talk to you again in a couple of weeks. Hey, good care. Bye-bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, and there she was, ladies and gentlemen, my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett. Uh, we love talking to her. I, you know, I just, it's nice that uh, what didn't work out as a marriage worked out as a good friendship. And uh, uh, we, uh, we like that. We like that. Let me see. My glasses are in my pocket. Why are they in my pocket? I have no idea why they're in my pocket. Well, it's time to go check in and see if we can get a, 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 a assemblage here called a citizen panel. Uh, and um, I'm going to admit the one person who's waiting right now in our waiting room. Uh, and as soon as he shows up, I will show him to you. Uh, and that would be, of course, uh, Charlie Wallace. Uh, and if you want to use it, just go over to uh, gabnet.net and over at the right-hand side of the page on the side, there's a little thing in the center that says, um, click here to join our Zoom panel, and you can just do it and be just like Charlie is. Just Charlie and me, folks. Hey, Hi, Charlie. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. You know, I always, always have this fear that that's going to be it, you know. Uh, but Robert Natali is calling now, so uh, we'll admit him to the group. <coughs> Excuse me. Easy now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I have, where, where, where are they? Oh, here they are. Let's see if I need them. I have a little cough medicine here. A little cough ah. pill. Yeah. So anyway, uh, hello, Robert. Hello, hello Charlie. Hello. Boy, Hi. Uh, yeah, yeah. I always have this fear that, you know, one night I will go on and nobody will call. You know, and then all of a sudden, a lot of people call, and then I, I worry that nobody will want to watch this drivel. And then um, last night we didn't have a lot of people watching it while we were doing it, but after it was over, we got an amazing amount of people. Uh, it, it just uh, maybe the highest number we've had after the show. Uh, so apparently they were out doing something better. And <laughs> and we do have the Labor Day weekend coming up after all. Any, yep. any of you so, do? So what? So what? Yeah. Well, I don't labor anymore anyway. So, yeah, right. you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 do you have any plans, Robert? Nope. Nope. You know, We're I, the same. I've never asked you this about family. You have a wife? A wife and a, a grown child. A grown child. How grown is that child? 32. God, that's like a little time bomb ticking away, isn't it? Yes. Saying you are getting <laughs> yes. older and older and older. Yes. Yeah, just one kid you had. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're, you're doing the Jewish thing. <laughs> the Jews are not known usually for large families. Right. You know, um, mainly because we fuck them once and that's it. You know. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. That's it. And uh, Jeff, hello, Jeff. How are you doing? Turn on your mic. Turn on your mic. Uh, yeah, turn it on. That way we can hear you. Well, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's a little easier to find the mic on this one, though, isn't it? It's just a picture of a microphone. You can't miss it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you've had less problems, I think, with Zoom than we, you ever had with uh, with. Uh, Absolutely. With uh, Zoom is very good. Yeah, uh, we were, we were using uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh my, Skype. But Skype. I it, it's so I have used it so infrequently lately that when I say Skype, I have to remember it now. You know, yeah. uh, and. Uh, you know, it's owned by Microsoft, so they're not going out of, out of business anytime soon. But no. I don't know anybody that uses Skype, uses Skype anymore for at least groups, you know. Um, there is a thing called Skype for Business or something that they're trying to, mm -hmm. they're trying to push like crazy. Um, 
But uh, I guess uh, initially I should ask you all, uh, are you doing anything, uh, Jeff, for the weekend? For the uh, on Sunday, I think. Yeah. I'm going to go see my son and mm -hmm. his wife and kids. That's good. See how they're doing, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. It, it's also nice that you get out. I get out, I take a walk, it's in the neighborhood, that's it. You know, the, the big day tomorrow is I have to go to the dentist because I have a, a tooth she needs to fill in. It's kind of getting a little ragged here. Uh, nothing, nothing terrible. And x-rays, or as I call it, the, uh, the gold hunt, you know. <laughs> Uh, they, they take, it seems like every time I go to the dentist, uh, she's doing something to figure out how she can make money off my mouth. Thanks. Well, let's take the x-rays, okay? Well, why? We took them last year. Yeah, but you know, you don't take good care of your mouth. It could be, you could have some <laughs> terrible stuff going on in there. Okay, well, go do your, go on your diamond hunt, you know. Um, and so I have to do that tomorrow. So that's my big thrill, getting, going to the center of town and then what I do is I take a lift down there and it only cost me $35 you know coming back I take a bus but and they were great for a while because the buses were free they weren't yeah. charging for them no longer no longer they're charging for them again yeah. yeah what the hell I don't mind you know paying the bus fare but I had to go looking for my senior citizen pass because I couldn't remember where I put it. It's been so long. <laughs> you know? Uh, What's the bus cost huh? these days? The bus? I, the bus? I have no idea. I just put the thing in there and it charges it to my, my account and, you know, mm -hmm. that's it. You know, so. Uh, and I haven't taken the subway yet. Um, I, I, I hear they're terrific. I hear they're clean and that they're... The, the, the least dangerous place in New York to be, mainly because nobody's taken it. You know, nobody's taken the subway. The subway is going broke. It's losing money hand over fist. Um, but, uh, and I, I guess I should take it once to just get over that fear, you know. But uh, we have a few little spikes going on here in New York, basically up in western New York. Uh, I think you probably heard about them, Robert. Uh, uh, a spike in some cases where upstate uh, it's over five percent infection yeah. rate here it's uh, the overall rate in new york is at 0.99 today which is higher than it has been but i think that has to do with what's going on in western uh, uh new york but we're still you know we only had five deaths we have 300 and two, 430 people uh hospitalized that's not bad. They would love to do that in Texas, right, Charlie? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're so jealous. Yeah. Is it still pretty bad there? Oh, yeah. Really? Because all of a sudden, you know, what happens is these news people get tired of reporting the same story over and over and over again. And so where they would go, oh, look how terrible it is today in Texas. Look how terrible it is today in Arizona. Look how terrible it is in Florida. They're just not even making those into stories anymore, and yet we're still losing in the country. We're losing a thousand people a day. Yeah, we had a set a record for deaths in Texas just last Friday, and it wasn't even in the newspapers. I had to find out about it online. Yeah, I uh, I'll tell you what happened. I was I was watching uh, uh, some. I, I go over to YouTube and watch a lot of videos. Just and there was this video of this show called The Five on Fox where they were going after Cuomo because he went after Trump, right? I played that thing yesterday. And um, they said, well, this guy shouldn't talk because he was responsible for 11,000 deaths in the, uh, in the nursing homes. And I decided, I'm gonna look up and see how many people actually died in the nursing homes. And it's not insignificant, but it was 6,400 out of the something like 30,000 deaths that happened at that time in New York State. Yeah. So and, it wasn't 11,000. Uh, and no. secondly, he was going by CDC protocol. Yes. You know. Uh, let's, go back, let's go back to that number for a second. What, what I found interesting was that uh, there was an individual who used to call this show regularly, who hasn't called in about a week or so, yeah. who... Yeah. 
at first quoted that it was 7,000. And then I happened to watch about a half hour of Fox the next night. And Fox decided to raise that number to 11,000. And that individual who used to call this show regularly that doesn't call much anymore suddenly had new information and quoted 11,000. Oh, I see. They could just as easily have pulled 23,000 out of their ass, you know, and, yeah. and I guess that would have been the number. Yeah. Uh, what happened back then, I mean, uh, he takes he takes the fall for it. You know, he's willing to say, hey, you know, I'm sorry for what went on. But what he was doing was he was going by CDC guidance. Here was the guidance. If somebody in a, in a, in a nursing home became ill with COVID, you put them in a hospital, okay? As soon as they uh, were no longer infected with it, you know, and they could still be testing positive, mind you, uh, but they're no longer infected with it, you had to really take them and put them back in the homes or somewhere. Uh, and that was a good question as to where that somewhere would be because uh, you, we were so, our hospitals were so overstressed that we couldn't just keep people there to make sure that they, they suddenly became negative, okay? Which could take several weeks after you've had it, all right? So uh, he was simply going by CDC guidance and uh, that's, that, that's what, the, uh, what that was all about. He wasn't like sending, and by the way, he, the, the, he also said, if anybody didn't want to go back to the nursing home, they wanted to go to a, another home or facility or whatever, right. we would arrange for that. Right. They're but, free to do so. But most of them were happy to go back to the nursing home because they were yeah. now well. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, you know, they still were testing positive, but they were well. So we weren't sending infected people back there. Fox, people like that try to blame him for that. They try to blame him for the fact that we have still have the highest death toll of any state in the United States. But the reason for that death toll was the simple fact that we got hit with all these people coming in from Europe because our president didn't close travel from Europe. He closed it from China because we all hate China. But Europe, hey, we love Europe. Well, let them all come in. They're getting infected. And we knew they were infected because we saw the numbers in Europe. And we saw the number of, I mean, we saw entire countries shutting themselves down, not allowing people to leave their homes. And if they did, they got fined for it. So we you know, knew, and we didn't do it. You know, it. Alex, I, I'd like to talk for a minute about the power of messaging. Yeah. I clearly recall being a kid and seatbelts becoming the thing. Mm -hmm. And at first, Thanks people rebelled later. against that idea yeah. and thought mm -hmm. that it restricted them and it was uncomfortable. And so how is it that now most of us, without even thinking, reflexively wear a seatbelt? In my opinion, the messaging was strong. Yeah. You know, Ad Council put out the crash test dummy commercials and so forth. Right. So who controls the message oftentimes gets the change to happen. I happened to do some freelance writing in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And one of the people I interviewed was uh, Cindy Leitner, who was the founder of Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And again, that was a case where drunk driving was considered, ah, everybody does it. I'm okay. Well, the messaging changed. And now when we see somebody that's, you know, a little bit under the weather get behind the wheel, we're all appalled. Again, the messaging change. Didn't the same thing happen with cigarette smoking? I clearly remember being first hired and working in my office, and me among them were all smoking cigarettes oh, at a, our desk. I, I was a smokestack. Oh, please. And, and, and what changed? What changed was the messaging. It got through to people, hey, maybe this isn't such a good idea. This, in the case of coronavirus, the messaging was all wrong. The messaging was to deny that it was a problem because it threatened re-election. Messaging was never directed at getting people to grasp the idea that masks and social distancing were the proper way to go. 
And once that messaging was aborted by the president, it then become, became a political division. And, you know, in spite item. of the fact of what we know about wearing masks and how any doctor will tell you, any physician, any clinician will tell you, wear a mask. It helps mitigate the situation. Our president, in spite of the fact that he said, well, you probably should wear a mask. He never does it by example. And when he has people around him in a crowd like at his speech the other day for the Republicans, nobody was wearing a mask. You, 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 you serve by example, you know? And if he had just done something simple like start wearing a mask in public, mm -hmm. all his minions would start imitating him and doing exactly the same thing. And he could have saved 10, 20, 30,000, who knows how many lives. You know, but he didn't do it. And, and, and that's what I think I, I find most disgusting about Donald Trump. And that is that the man doesn't understand that his job is to protect the American public. You know, and he's, he's a big, he's a big bully. He's a big bully, but he thinks that he's oh, a big bully. And I think, you know, seeing him today in front of the, the you know, doing the Air Force One thingy, I, I couldn't listen to him. Man, he just starts saying the same old stuff, and he started getting into Joe. Mm -hmm. And this is how he's going to be in the debates. He's going to be a big bully in the debates. He's not going to let Joe get anything out. Joe's going to stutter trying to, you know, get stuff out, and he's going to keep talking over him. He's not going to let him say anything. He's going to say these stupid lies, and he's going to be a big bully. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, the, the point is that his job is to protect the American public. And he clearly has been remiss in that duty. All right. Well, in his mind, his job is to get reelected. He doesn't give a crap well, about he, him. He says exactly he, his that. idea of protecting you is protecting you against mythical riots. Yeah. You know, about creating riots out of just a little firestorm somewhere. You know, I mean, what was going on in Portland had pretty well calmed down. There was nothing going on. There, there were some people every night who were out there going, about Black Lives Matter, fine, that's good. Uh, but then all of a sudden, he brings in the troops to start broiling things up, and all of a sudden, there's rioting in the streets again. Basically, it's a police riot, but it was rioting nonetheless. And um, uh, he says, I'm protecting America because I'm taking a strong hand against it. There is no, if you're listening to me, America, Nobody listens to this show, but if you're listening to me, America, <laughs> we'll spread the word. There is no problem when it comes to rioting in your home, in your suburb, or your neighborhood. There's a few isolated things that are going on. And by the way, tonight, uh, Marjorie said to me, and I, I've said this before, she said, you know, crime is up in New York City. Crime is up in Chicago. Uh, why? Well, didn't we have a thing called the coronavirus? Didn't we have people stuck indoors for six months, for five, six months? This is really kind of a reaction to that. Does that Moreover, make this, is that, huh? Crime, crime statistics have been heading down in major cities over yeah. the course of 25 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it. So if you, if you compare happen? New York this year to last year, it's not really a good comparison. You should compare no, it not. against 20 years ago. Right. But yeah. compare 1970, you know, or 1980 to the year 2018, and you'll see that the slope of violent crimes has been marked, and that's in most major cities. Yeah. He's like the arsonist who shows up an hour later in uniform to help put out the fire that he started. You yeah. Know, it's just well i mean folks you know the danger that you have from number one uh antifa that doesn't even exist i'm sorry if i knew where antifa was i'd be joining them right now okay so would robert we do you know when the meetings are robert i i, I hope to attend <laughs> yep yeah, but, I, but it's, please antifa if you're watching send us an invitation let us know where yeah. we show up you know i'm against We're, fascism I, I, i'm against yeah. fascism and by the way uh i i'm i'm an anarchist as well so i'm i'm the kind of person you'd want around you 
All right. Yep. Uh, and and then we can all uh, go out to those uh, the suburban neighborhoods and uh, terrorize the suburban neighborhoods. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, what he's done is he, he's he, he's created this crisis that doesn't exist. But anyway, we know that's true. The fact is, are there other people in America who realize they're being, you know, used? Um, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I think that one of the problems also with the riots is, you know, they're saying, oh, we'll have a curfew, you know, 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when the sun goes down is when all these other people start coming out and start riot, you know, start yeah. making fires and all this stuff. If they're really serious about it, they'd lock down even sooner than that, just yeah. at least for those weeks. Bree, you got your hand up? Uh, yeah, so it, uh, I, I wanted to raise the issue of the election. Um, in case you didn't see the Washington Post uh, story, they ran, uh, they, they, they did this experiment where they got a bunch of Republicans and Democrats together and they ran these what ifs and, and scenarios. Yeah. And basically, the only scenario where there was sort of orderly transition is if Joe Biden had a complete and utter landslide across the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, if you look at the polling, even if, you know, and we say, well, polling is never that accurate. Actually, it was it was pretty accurate. It has been pretty accurate. It was pretty accurate uh, for Hillary Clinton. It's just that uh, it didn't predict in the key battleground states where the electoral college. It didn't was take running. the electoral college into consideration. Yeah. It was talking about total votes, right. and they were right so when it came to total that, votes. Yeah, right. So we Luckily, we can yeah. say right now, mm-hmm. that, and I was reading another article that says a lot of uh, Trump uh, supporters will not talk to pollsters. They feel. Uh, you know, they're going to hold that in. So they say there's a, you know, a three to five percent bump, invisible bump for Trump that's always present. So, I mean, just going on that, we, we can and, and we see that it's, uh, you know, in Las Vegas betting is 50 50 right now. So no, it's I not. think we could assume. Wait a minute. That wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Bree, Bree, you're wrong because Robert that's, is the expert on not this. true. What that is isn't That isn't close to true, Bree. Right now, right. if you want want to bet Joe Biden in Las Vegas houses, you have to lay 165 to win 100. That's hardly 50-50. Yeah, really. Well, according to Fortune.com. Well, forget them. Robert Natale Natale is the gambler. (laughs) Yeah. As of Wednesday morning, the site's betting market data gave Biden a 50% probability. Don't buy it. They don't take bets. Yeah, Fortune Fortune doesn't run a casino. a landslide would be what, seventy percent? But I, but I don't, I don't buy the that. premise to begin with. You, you're, you're making us accept your premise that it would require a landslide. I don't buy that I'm, premise to I, begin it's with. It's not me. It's not my premise. It's the Washington Post. I don't care whose it is. I don't buy it's the premise. Part of, it's part of the transition integrity project. So. It's not like they just thought this up. Let me say something. Actually, let me say. Let me say they something. They did an experiment. Bree, let me say something about the Washington Post and the New York Times and any newspaper and any news organization you want. They are ready to gin up anything because it gets people to read and watch in this election year. Mm-hmm. So if, yep. like yesterday, right. they found that Phil that in Pennsylvania uh, the um, M- Monmouth poll, I think it was. Uh, came out where it said that uh, the race was closer than it had been. So what's their headline at the beginning of the hour? Biden is losing his advantage. You know, well, and I stuck around like a sucker to hear them tell me that in Pennsylvania in one poll, it went the other, it it, it closed up a bit. Do you know the names? By the the way, by the way, Bree, 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 is there any way you can prevent your... uh, your camera from adjusting to the light because or either that or just move it a bit because with that background you keep going black and then we see you and then you're black and then we see you you yeah, know. your glare from the window it's the glare from the window yeah yeah so uh, yeah see so what happens see if you here. move 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 out of the frame a second and you'll see what I'm talking about you know you see what what happens yeah uh, yeah see so if I'm not can, sure. Yeah. Well, uh, a, anyway. Well, yeah, I agree with you, and I understand that the media, and I understand what I'm saying is, this the Transition Integrity Project is 
a nonpartisan group, unlike the FEC, which, by the way, is quite partisan and run by a Republican uh, and is in control of the election. Yeah. These guys are just, you know, a project. But actually, I find their their uh, the experiment to be I mean, these these are Democrats and Republicans, and they played out all the scenarios. And the Republicans said, we're going to fight the way we're going to fight. And the Democrats say, we're going to fight the way we're going to fight. And what it came down to was, well, let me ask you this. Why did Al Gore concede the election? Because, oh, I mean, in theory, he could have yeah. won if he if he would have he stayed. But did why win. did he do that? It had no, so you're saying it had nothing to do with the fact that the fucking winner's brother was the governor of that state and that the person who was in charge of counting the voting was an appointee of his. It had nothing whatsoever to do with that. Come on. You no, know, give I, me a break. I, I don't know what you're saying. You're, you're putting words. What Jeb I'm saying Bush, is... Jeb Bush was the, was the governor of Florida at Florida. the time the Gore-Bush problems in Florida happened. And who right, was so, the person that was in charge of counting the vote in that state with so the hanging saying, heads? It was so a you're moron Trump has no that connections like by that. Jeb. So you're saying Trump has no connections like that, like he can't make things like that happen? Yes, of course I, he can. I do think so, but I think you're drawing a scenario that has. I'm, every I'm not drawing the scenario. Thing. It's when, the transition integrity and project. I'm tell, it's and not I'm me. Saying, I'm I don't raising buy it as that. an issue. Can I? Can I? Okay. Can I? Say, I don't buy that. I don't buy okay, it at all. So wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. Steele, Everybody, come. John Podesto, former Michigan governor, Kentucky Secretary of State. Democratic National Committee acting chair, uh, journalists. I mean, you're 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 basically arguing against, you know, thirty or forty people who who have probably the most insight into this that is possible. But do they? And they do they? It. Uh, do J they? J John Podesta couldn't I think take. They do. John Podesta couldn't take care of his emails. Okay, so so let's take bets right now. How many people think it's going to be an easy, orderly transition? No, I, I know we we're not believing. No, we're, we're not believing that at all. Uh, we That's don't believe what it. they're saying. They're saying there's not going to be an orderly transition. And the main and so reason what's for the that point is because Trump is, is, is it to drum up, up? Is it to drum up Trump interest on your part? What is your point in all this? My point is we have to be prepared for the fact that there's going to be a constitutional crisis in November. Fine. I think we all probably understand and realize yeah. that. But I think okay. what you're saying. By the way, realize, by the way, let me also say before you finish, fin I'll have you finish your thought in a second, sure. that it is not going to be a crisis of our own making. It's because Trump is going to if if he loses, he's not going to allow himself to lose easily. And this thing could keep going on and on and one you know, one uh, a suit after another. I mean, it, it could be an absolute mess. Yes, Robert. And then, hello, I'm Kevin. Pro, I'm, for the most part, I'm pro-press. But in this case, I have to call the press out and agree with something Alex said earlier. It's in their vested interest to portray that this race is tightening. When they started reporting a week ago that the race was tightening, if you simply went to 538, who amalgamates all the polls, you found out that Biden had actually increased his lead by a smidgen. That isn't a big deal, but it certainly isn't true that the race had tightened. It's in the press's vested interest to make well, it get Well, it's I kind of like the press. I, I the press, wait, premise. The, pr the press is huge. The media are. It's not is. You have to give this partic particular example. Wait a minute, I mean, but the press, the press are the kind of people that, uh, at, uh, I will say, during the middle of a TV show, the newscaster comes in and says, something that absolutely could kill you tomorrow morning. We'll tell you at 11. That's, that's local television news. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about lo they, the national TV does it too. All of them do yeah. things to keep listeners, okay? And or viewers are reading and yeah. viewers, and so therefore uh, they're going to be ginning this thing up. You know, I look over at MSNBC and then I go over to Fox, and I see a whole different world. You know, a whole different take on stuff. I saw these people on the Five going after Cuomo today, and every one of them were right wingers going after Cuomo. Then I go over to MSNBC, and everybody is in love with Mark uh, Andrew Cuomo. 
I mean, there's, you know, where can you go to get news that doesn't have any of this? And the answer is, you can't. You know, maybe Bloomberg, but basically you're getting business over there. Yes, uh, Kevin. Thanks, Pam. Not Kevin, but uh, John. Yeah, but yeah, um, one thing about MSNBC, when they bring these pundits on, you look at them and their qualifications are like, you know, like a, a professor at Harvard of epidemiology yeah. or, uh, you know, a, a, some, a, a senator or something. You know, usually high level people, but then you look at the people they bring on at Fox and they're just, you know, hacks that they found, you know, on, on some fucking website somewhere, you know, like like this Bung Giorgio guy or, or the fucking the, the sheriff with the hat, you know, the cowboy. Yeah. hat. Well, guy. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I find Fox disgusting. All right. Yeah. But I also find MSNBC disgusting for exactly the same reason. I you know, agree. I I don't want biased news. I'm sorry. I, I, I and I I don't want somebody who's going to kiss my ass and tell me what I want to hear. I'm going to want somebody who feeds me facts and lets me determine what the story is. Okay. And where do you get that, Alex? Well, I, there's no place to get it with any reliability. The New York Times, I think, is fairly reliable, to be honest with you, of all the of all the publications. But I ain't going to USA Today because uh, you know I don't like my newspaper to be in full color. You know, I like it in black C and white. C-SPAN. C-SPAN well, is the only place to watch with no commentary. Oh, at no all. commentary at all. I mean, I love that show where the guy <laughs> takes calls and people say stuff that's so off the wall it's ridiculous. And he's going, "Well, oh, thank you so much for your call." <laughs> you know, that man has to has to get an award for just being putting up with that crap. It's also Re funny to listen to Fox talk about "quote unquote" the media like they are not the media. Well, yeah, like they're outside. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, like Laura Ingram the media. is not mainstream yeah. media. Yeah. Or, 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 or even refer to other people as fake news. You know, well, I'm that's sorry. That's what I mean. It's like they're not the media. Hello. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I I don't I never you know what I got sick of. Um, you mentioned somebody that used to call the show on a regular basis who hasn't. And by the way, let me just say, I never told him not not to call. Okay, or told him he was banned from the show or anything like that. He decided to take himself out of the mix. I guess I have not heard from him. Uh, so I uh, I want you to know that, folks, that I have no way have discouraged him. In fact, when he left that night, I thought he just didn't like what was going on. He just left, you know, but he just never came back. So, you know. Well, this has happened before. Well, no, this has not happened to, like this. Okay. It's happened on a one-day basis or a two-day basis or whatever. But anyway, all I'm, I just want to make get that straight to people. Nobody has been banned from this show. Uh, you know, was, oh yeah, a couple of people have been banned, but <laughs> they don't really matter. It's not for political reasons. Um, but uh, all I'm saying is, is that. You know, I mean, where do you get the straight news? And all you can do is kind of watch it all and then kind of like average it out maybe in on some level, you know? I mean, I well, we need greater media literacy. You know, oh. that's that's the first thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you can also get it internationally as well. Um, you know, oftentimes what you find is, is that in your particular area, you might not get the correct news. I, I give you an example. In Pittsburgh, a lot of times we get stories. We have to read about it in the New York Times because our local paper doesn't cover it because the local paper is too vested in various political interests and advertising interests. So sometimes that external mm -hmm. New York Times reporter can yeah. actually get the story that the Pittsburgh Post Gazette can't yet. You know, so uh, but but there are some uh, there are some new like the civil tokens there. Uh, we have a um, there's a radio station ESA, you know the public stations that there are. Yeah, I, I, so there I, are I, some I, that are I, BBC America here is pretty good, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, they don't seem to be biased on any level. They just report the news, you know. And uh, uh, but but you know, I mean, we're the problem is we're having to most people are having get their news from one of several places and usually the place they're going to go is with the people they agree with so if you're a right winger and you're like our friend who isn't calling the program you watch fox or you watch newsmax or you watch uh, 
O-A-N, yeah. Um, uh, in fact, we have more right-wing stations on cable here than we do left-wing stations. Mm -hmm. We've got OAM, we've got uh, Newsmax, we've got Fox Business, which is always political. It's never business. The Fox mm -hmm. News and... Um, you know, so you've got all those on that side, and you got the CNN and MSNBC on the other side, and uh, you can try and watch all these things and try and figure out what's going on. But usually, what pe where people will go is to that service, which bespeaks their politics. Okay, uh, and they will not go anywhere else. Uh, they will not go over to MSNBC if they watch Fox. Or they, if they watch MSNBC, God forbid they should watch Newsmax, you know, which is a moronic organization, but that's beside the point. They're not even a good news organization. But Fox is a, a I'm not going to say a reliable news organization. I'm going to say a good news organization in that they're very professionally done. Uh, I can tell you now that uh, I used to go over to Fox to be a pundit over at Fox because it was right across the street from Sirius, so they'd call us up when they needed somebody. And I would go over there, and I was treated, I mean, the way they, they were so professional, it was just ridiculous. You know, and then I would go over to N MSNBC because I was on Tucker Carlson's show every Friday. And he did a thing between I and a right winger, and uh, that went on for about about 13 weeks, and it was really good. But MSNBC was like this slapdash organization at that time. So when I went over to Fox, the way they—I mean, you go sit with the makeup woman, you know, she's putting the makeup on you, and you know, I didn't—I had to bring my own makeup to MSNBC. Uh, but the the point is, is that that. Uh, Fox is a very professional organization, okay? No question about it. And I was treated well over there. Uh, but nevertheless, their news is wrong, you know? It is biased, and it lies, and it gives out facts like 11,000 people died in nursing homes in New York State, which isn't true. It's 6,400. That's a terrible number by anybody's standard, but when you compare that to the 30,000 or so that actually died in, in New York, I think it was 34,000, Jeff, something like that, died in New York during the, the height of the pandemic, 23,000 of which were in New York City. And all because that asshole Trump didn't nip this thing in the bud. He didn't see it coming. He, he, all he saw was China. Oh, it's coming from China. Oh, it's the China virus. No, it's the European virus. That's what we got here. I'm through. Okay, go ahead, everybody. Bree, may, Bree, may I ask you something? And, and I don't mean this to trap or to argue with, with you. I really am trying to learn your point of view. If indeed you're right and there is a constitutional crisis on the uh, horizon. Not, I'm right. Uh, no, not, well, you're making the point I'm for raising now. I'm, I'm not looking to trap you. No, I understand yes, that. Yes, because you keep saying I, 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 or your, your. I'm only saying I'm it referencing be, an because you I articulated read. I tried to it. Post it. It's not working. Bree, I'm not trying to pin you down as though you said it. I'm just saying you because you articulated. I'm not looking to trap you. I'm really trying to learn here. If indeed you're right, and, and, and what you said earlier that you've read says that a constitutional crisis is on the horizon, you personally, what what is your prescription for the average citizen to do about that? And I mean that to learn, not to trap. Do you have a prescription in mind for what it is that we, the citizenry, should be doing about that? The only thing we can do is get out in the street. No, I, yeah, I, I don't think we can, because I guess my ultimate is to say that, you know, either you... We, the the reason why the system works is because we agree it works. Yeah. So, you if know, Trump, so it, it's a, it's the same way that if I give you a dollar bill, and you know, and you give me a an ice cream cone, you know, we agree that that piece of paper has value. It's but actually, sense. the ice cream cone has value. The dot that piece of paper does not. You're right. But we agree to it, right? So yeah. what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, is that, I, unfortunately, 
you know, and I guess I made the point before, mm -hmm. uh, and this is something our founding fathers, and I don't know, is Josh on tonight? The, the demagoguery, the demagogue was sort of their greatest fear, and mm -hmm. we're now realizing it. And what, what I guess I'm frustrated with is we're not going to get out of this. Either Trump wins or we let him win or he has to win or we or everything breaks down. So, I mean, you think it's breaking down now. Wait till he doesn't win. Well, at or one point, yeah, win. at one point, Trump said that this election, because of mail in ballots and so on, is going to be the biggest mess ever when it comes to an election. And I agree with him. It is going to be the biggest mess ever because he's not going to let it go. Even if Biden gets a resounding victory, he's not conceding it. And he's going to fight it. And he's going to wait for every, he's going to blame the males. And he's going to, you know, he set, a, he set up the whole scenario for losing. He set it up last time with Hillary yeah. because he thought he was going to lose. And then when he won, he, he said, well, you said it was going to be a, a fixed election and you won. Now what do you have to say? You know? Um, yes, John. Um, if, if he tried to steal, okay, if, it, if it's really close and he closes it all down and says, hey, look, I won, mm -hmm. you know, and, he's, and it's obvious that he's stealing the election. Yeah. You know, there's there are two things that would stop him. The judiciary, which wouldn't stop him because he's got it pretty much controlled with uh, Barr, mm -hmm. and the military. And I got a feeling the military, if it got that bad, the military would not back him up, you know? Especially mm -hmm. with this latest story about this news that's coming out about these military guys, you know, tell, you know the sources for that story about him saying that, you know, if you heard the latest story, right, about the uh, losers, know, yeah, the losers in the cemetery and all that. So that had to come from military people that are that are telling that story. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I got a feeling the military wouldn't wouldn't back them up. Yeah. If it came to that. By the way, uh, uh, Kevin, what are you reading there? It looks like you were reading uh, either a phone bill or some news. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't. We can't hear you, Kevin. Turn on your mic. Can't see it either. Oh, oh, oh. Donald J. Trump. What is oh, that? This is my request from Donald J. Trump. Well, my t your your mic is off again, Kevin. Kevin, your mic is off. Uh, remember the letters I was getting last year from Trump yeah. the survey and stuff that I showed you. Yeah. Yeah, he sent me another one here. Um, he wants money. Yeah. He wants $2,020. No, he wants $2,020, uh, $1,000, or $35, or a symbolic gift of $20.20 for the TMAGAC team to successfully fight back against another green wave of liberal cash. That's for the um, what do they call it? The uh, how much? How much did uh, how he much? Sent, did... Check this out. He said, "I sent along a pre-stamped envelope with oh, three cents on it. <laughs> <laughs> three cents, but it's also pre-addressed and prepaid. What Go the on. hell is that? Who knows? Yeah, it's one of those campaign things, and then they want you to fill out a survey and all this crap. I, I can't wait to fill this one out." How do you spell <laughs> the heck? Is it B A N N O N? Is that how it's spelled? I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's. I got one of these last year, and I kept sending them back, and I'd, I'd fill out everything that they wanted not to hear. I'd fill it out and send it back, <laughs> and I, you know, how much money are you gonna send? Nothing, and I'd scratch out my name and take me off your list and all this. I don't know how I got on this on this list. But, uh, you know, they'd say, what, you know, what party are you with? And I'd put the Communist Party and things like that. Wow. And they still send me the stuff. They still send it to you. Wow. So they're going to get another one back. Uh, I'm sure they will. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be happy to send them uh, sure. a, a, another sure. one back. And send their three-cent stamp back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three one-centers. That's, that's amazing. They said, we wanted to get your attention, and so I put three one-cent stamps on the front. That's what it opens up with. Yeah. Oh. 
So anyway, oh, there's three stamps. live stamps on here. I, yeah. So yes. They Je won't deliver it. Je <laughs> yes, Jeff. My one thing is everybody is talking about the number of people who are supplying uh, Trump or the other guy. And the, the reality about who's going to win is the states and the number of people in the states. And, and you know, whatever the states have, they're going to get, in Texas, they're going to get, I don't know, 100 points. And yeah. in New York, you'll get 100 points. And in uh, North Dakota, they'll get one. No, you get you no, you don't get one. You get you the least you have that you have what you have. How they get oh, the electoral three. college, it's two votes for each senator, and then a vote for one each congress. of your congressmen. And I think the one state with the least congressman is one sta is a one. So I think yeah. it's a three. Yeah. Yes. A char nobody yeah. is really calculating those things. Yeah, they, yeah. they are. No, they they are, but. Uh, Charlie. Well, I never hear it. Charlie? And to me, that's yeah. at least the reality of what, mm -hmm. what's going to make the decision. Yeah. Charlie? Yeah, I, I think that the uh, the reason that that uh, transition committee or whatever that the Washington Post talked to were, was saying what they were saying is because what they don't want is for people to think this thing is in the bag, so I don't really need to take the trouble to go vote. They're trying to make it look like you have to vote because unless we have an overwhelming majority, we're going to have chaos. And so they're they're obviously doing as much as they can to get the most people to come out and vote. And so they tell they're telling everybody it's got to be a landslide. It's got to be a huge landslide, or, or else we're going to have chaos. Yes, John. Well, yeah, oh, Trump's uh, Trump's uh, who, who's who's telling them that. Who's telling what that you're the one who brought up the article about the transition committee. Right, well, but the transition committee is nonpartisan. There there are Republicans on yeah, there. No, the Republican yeah, Michael Steele. Yeah, but yeah. they're anti-Trump. He is he's already gone on record for saying he supports Biden. Everyone yeah. on that committee <laughs> is a well, Republican. You know, then in that a, case, there's no Republicans backing Trump except for his people that he's got crap on. And, and in a way, Trump is the he's the anti-establishment vote, which is ironic. Um, yeah. You know, if you don't like the system, then you vote for Trump. Yeah, but what Trump wants to do is have a dictatorship. Yeah, yeah. that's what that's, right. that's anti-system. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wants to be king. Right. <laughs> yes, uh, John Larkin had his hand up. John. Yeah, I just noticed that Trump has got he's tweeting out uh, looking for volunteers for. Um, uh, uh, polling place watchers. <laughs> yeah, with guns, which, has been, probably. which has been going on forever. Yeah. With guns. Well, you know what? The, the problem the problem that I have, I've constantly had, I mean, we go back, all this goes back to the Electoral College, okay? Which, to in all my life, it never made sense, all right? And here I am, 80 years old, and it still doesn't make sense. Um, you know, it made sense when... Um, you had to ride all the way from uh, Nevada to Washington, D.C. to vote, and so they distilled all the votes and sent three guys on horse, horseback, you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, what I don't like is, I know that New York State is going to go for Biden. There's no question in my mind about it. It's, it's a fait accompli. If I don't show up at the poll, I'm not changing that outcome. All right. I'll vote. I'm going to vote yeah. anyway, but I won't change that outcome. I want to feel that it does, that my vote, vote does add to the outcome and that uh, it's not being they're not taking my vote and all the votes of the people in the state and then compressing them into 78 people. I want to know that my one vote counts and that one vote in, in Ohio that somebody cast counts and that it's the total number of people and who got yeah. the most votes, who wins. That's yes. why we should get rid of the uh, uh, le electoral college. Well, that's what... That's the only office in the whole fucking country where the person that gets the most votes that's doesn't necessarily win. win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What were you going to say, Robert? 
Um, I, I'll take you back to one of my civics classes years ago. Mm -hmm. Here's a statistic that always blew me away and blew my kids away. Ready for this? Mm -hmm. 18% of the population of this country yeah. is represented by 52% of the senators. Yep. Yeah. Stop and think about that for a minute. 18% of the population controls 52% of the Senate. Yeah. There's something yeah. upside down about that. Well, it, it's, it's all upside down. Uh, and it, it continues to be upside down, and it's it, it's crazy. And I just find that uh, I don't like the fact that my one vote doesn't really count. You know, it may count in some state where it's really close, but it doesn't count in New York. You know, why should I even walk across the street? The only reason I'm walking across the street or filling out a ballot is because there's some measures on that ballot I want might want to vote for that are important, you know. But um, I, I just, you know, it, it, in all my life, it, it never made sense. And for years, I didn't vote for that very reason. I never saw a reason to. Whatever state I was in, I lived in Texas for the longest time for a couple of years. And in that state, it was Republican. You know, the founding fathers didn't trust the populace. It really comes down to that. They didn't trust the average person right. to yeah. make wise decisions. Mm -hmm. Originally, you, you couldn't vote if you didn't own land. Well, own land. It, it, exactly. it, it, actually, uh, the person who voted in this country was white and rich. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and owned the blacks. And male. You know? And male. Yeah. And male. And male. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And it, it's taken us this many years to get past that. <clears throat> wow. And as here on the West <laughs> Coast, it's even worse because we can see what's going on on the East Coast. Yeah. Before. Yeah. yeah. Until until right. recently, you know. You, right. Oh, listen, I got to tell you, case, yeah, let me, it. let me, and I, and I can t talk to Kevin and I can talk, uh, uh, talk to uh, Brian and I can talk to uh, John Larkin when I say the following. And that is when I was in California, I can remember a election night and I was going to go in and do election night coverage at KMEL in San Francisco. And we were going to start our coverage at 8 o'clock at night. So I'm driving across the Golden Gate Bridge, and they call the election for, I can't remember who was running that year. I think it was Reagan, maybe. Yeah. Just a yeah. it. Yeah, and I just, I was almost going to turn around on the Golden Gate Bridge and go back home. There was no yeah. reason. Because if you lived in California, you were an afterthought. You were never the yeah. make or break Carter. state. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but was it Carter? 80, no, it was Reagan. 84, it was, 84 was a total wipeout, so you pretty much knew who was going to win so early. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it was like, you know, Reagan. Wipeout. They were calling the race before the polls closed in the West. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I, and, and they don't, I don't think they do that now, or they're very careful about not doing that. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I just felt living on the West Coast, you were a secondary citizen. You know, your vote didn't count. It was no, it, nobody was going to be put over the top by California. But yeah. what's going to happen. I still don't understand why California is in its own country. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. <laughs> I, I don't understand why California Real. is in two states. Okay. Because when, yeah. when I lived there, I was for chopping it up into two states because uh, what goes on uh, down in the southern part of the state had nothing to do with the needs of what was going in the upper part of the state. Plus, what we would do then is sell pot to the southern part of the state. But, uh, <laughs> and hey, wine. It, it used to be a Republican state. Now it's totally Democrat. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Remember how it was? Uh, well, day, when I was really a kid good. growing up, I mean, you had a governor, Earl Warren. Okay. Yeah. You know. Uh, he was and, a Democrat, wasn't he? No, he's a Republican. Was he? He was oh, a yeah. Republican, yeah. Yeah. He was, he was one of those Republicans. They made the uh, chief justice of the Supreme Court thinking they'd have a shoe in for a conservative, and he voted nothing but lefty. He bailed. Yeah, yeah. he bailed, and they just hated him. <laughs> and it was like the John Birch Society was trying to impeach or get him out, and they called him a communist and everything else, you know, because he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't uh, fall in line with the party. But, uh, you know, I mean, it, I agree, I think, uh, with you on one thing, and that is, Bree, that the election is going to be a mess. 
because he's going to muddy up the waters with this whole mail-in voting thing, and he's going to he's going to push it into a in, perhaps to the Supreme Court in one way or another, and he's going to refuse to leave. Yeah, I mean, and so that's why it has to be a real route. But even if it's a real route, I don't think he's leaving. <laughs> He'll still say something. And if yeah. you listen to um, Bill Barr in that CNN interview, he's got him washed too. So he's oh, yes. already he's ready. He's already involved. He ready. He's, he's doing the same crap. Yeah. And what yeah, was he doing? Got, what, what he has was, three or four different things that he said. Let me quickly do to tip the scale. Let me quickly ask you because last night I said that I didn't think that Biden should go to Kenosha because. I didn't like the idea of Trump going to Kenosha because I didn't think we should turn that situation into politics, okay? What did you think of what Biden did today? Do you think he comported I, himself? I didn't well? see what he did. Today. I thought it was great. I thought he... Uh, what I heard, too. I thought, I thought it was fine. And yeah. the people were, were welcomed. You know, they welcomed him, unlike what they did with Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, Trump said he heard nothing but cheering on the way from the airport. I guess he yeah, can't tell right. the difference between a boo and a cheer because his hearing yeah. is, is bad <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. That was like the sports show. They piped it in. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> cardboard fans. Yeah, cardboard fans. <laughs> oh, by the way, somebody out, last yeah. night said that Serena was out of the U.S. Venus. Said but it was Venus. 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 It wasn't Venus. Serena. I thought it was Serena. No, she's still. No, Venus. No, Venus. 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 Yeah. yeah. He said Venus. Yeah. Well, yeah. my wife is watching this thing and watching tennis without a crowd, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't know, but it just doesn't work. I'm sorry. Somebody, somebody passed the really good crack last week in the world of sports. There was a dude from the White Sox that pitched a no hitter. Yeah. And so some reporter said that Lucas Giolito of the White Sox pitched a no hitter in front of 10,000 cutout fans. But 20 years from now, 60,000 cardboard cutouts will claim that they were at the game that night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I remember when we had the earthquake in San Francisco uh, back in, what was it, uh, 89, 89, 89. 89 uh, they were playing the World Series out at, uh, at uh, Shea Stadium. No, candlestick. It was candlestick. Oh, man, I am out of it tonight. <laughs> candlestick. And everybody I knew claimed to have been there. And yeah, I said to myself, there. if all the people who claimed to be there were there, they wouldn't have room for them. Yeah, right. <laughs> either either they're at the game or they're on the bridge. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, yeah, well, it was lucky it wasn't happening in uh, in uh, uh, Oakland with it, because it was a well, it, 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 it was a cross bay. Well, I, <clears throat> yeah, it was lucky that the World Series was on because if not, there would have been traffic all along or the crazy. the. The yeah. freeway. Uh, yeah, Oakland but freeway. if it had been if it had been in Oakland, the Oakland Stadium, they would have been crushed by that whole freeway coming down. It would have been a real I'd, disaster. So I had crossed it. You crossed it. I crossed it in my truck. I was I was uh, driving oh. semi and I'd gone from Oakland to San Francisco to San Jose, and then the earthquake hit. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I was on Divisadero going down the down Divisadero, and suddenly wondering why my car was bouncing down the street. Yeah. And then I saw people. Because I was a season ticket holder, and I wanted to see yeah. what was going on because I went to the first two games. Yeah. Oh, really? Oakland, yeah. Okay. But you weren't there, right? I was not, yeah, I not, was not there. in San Francisco because okay. I was an Oakland A's fan. There was a cardboard cutout of you, though, I think. But there was a cardboard <laughs> cutout, yeah. I threw it over there as I went Hey, by. listen, this has been uh, been terrific tonight. What a great uh, bunch of people, and what a nice uh, discussion we've been having here. And I thank you for all joining me tonight. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll see you all again thank you tomorrow. For the space, right? Alex. What? Thank you for what? Thank you for creating the space. The space. That's right. Uh, <laughs> th thank you very much, Charlie Wallace. Uh, thank you uh, to uh, Robert uh, Natali and to Jeff Stein and to Brian Neary and to Bree and to John Larkin and ultimately Kevin Stopper. Uh, I'll give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. And there'll be another citizen panel right after this is over with, with Jack Bishop. 
He'll be holding forth with uh, the intersection. He'll be doing it on Skype instead of Zoom. So, uh, and it's GabNet Live is the Skype address. Give him a call, okay? I'll see you again tomorrow night for our um, uh, Friday edition of the program. And uh, we will be seeing you then. Uh, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there and wear a mask. And since it's Labor Day weekend, don't go tongue kissing anybody at the beach. Okay. Bye. <laughs>